let's go ahead and talk about for loops. First thing, let's reintroduce variables again and talk about how for loops help with variables, how variables are used in for loops, and why we would even want to use for loops. So I'm going to go back to this variable example that I used in my last video, where we have x equaling some number in an equation, right? And then we have our function of some kind, right? And we plug in 125, wherever x is, and that's how we use the variable. Now, what if we want x to be more than just one thing? Maybe we want x to be 125, and we want it to be 25, and we want it to be 50, and we want it to be 75, and we want it to be 100. Maybe we want it to rotate through and be all those values, right? And is there some way that we can cycle through all of these numbers with this formula here and get our different equations, right? So for instance, maybe the first time we run this, x is 125. Maybe the next time we run it, x is 25. The next time we run it, it's 50. Next time we run this formula, it's 75. Next time we run, it's 100. That way, this is kind of a really short way to kind of express one, two, three, four, five different functions, right? Of what the value of that function can end up being. This is what a for loop helps us do. A for loop allows you to identify a variable and anything in a list, in this list we create, will be part of that variable. And then it'll just run the same function over and over and over and over, or the same formula or whatever you want it to do over and over again. And it will then plug in the very next variable, the very next variable, the next value of that variable over and over again. So let's see how this looks like on the command line. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to type this in the command line. Then we're going to do it in a script. So there's two ways you can actually end up doing this. And, the, and this is the syntax of how it works. So we do four. And then we think of a variable, whatever the variable is, all right? Let's do num for number, okay? So we're going to do numbers, and now we're going to create them in a list. So n is going to represent the following list of numbers. It's going to equal 1, it's going to equal 5, it's going to equal 10, it's going to equal 15, and how about 20? just like that. This is our list. This is how we say number and num is one. It can also be five. It can also be 10. It could be 15 and it could be 20, right? Now, if we're doing this all in one line, and I'll show you two different ways of doing this. We can, we hit a semicolon here because that's the first part, right? We have four for this variable in this list. This is what I want the list to be. I want it to do something. Well, what do I want it to do? Well, it can be anything you want it to do. You can echo it back, which we're going to do. Um, if, if these were IP addresses, you can ping the IP addresses. If it was some type of configuration or file that needs to be created, you can do that, whatever you need to do, right? So I'm going to do echo, and I'm going to say number. Oops, let me put quotation marks around there to be... The cleaner. Remember, we use the dollar sign to call back that variable. Okay, so this is the first part for the variable in our list. Do this command, whatever the command is. And you can do multiple commands. Like if we want to do multiple things with these numbers, we can. We can just put those in order. But we're just going to do the one thing, and I'm going to put a semicolon here, and then we have to tell it that it's done. Now, when I run it, what should happen is, is the echo command will run and it will print number and then it will actually display the first number in our list, which is one. Because, and then it's going to loop through again. This is why it's called the for loop. It's going to loop through and go through it again. And the for loop is going to start again. It goes, oh, I already used one. So now I'm going to use five. And then it's going to do echo number and it's going to include five as the number. And so far, and it's going to continue to loop. Let's go ahead and see if this works. There we go. 
number one, five, 10, 15, 20. So our variable changed and it just rolled through this list. That list can be anything. Let me show you another way um, that we can kind of lay this out on the command line, but kind of in a different structure or layout, right? We can, we can hit enter instead of putting a semicolon during those certain parts, right? We can do four number in, you gotta remember the in, whatever numbers you want or whatever you want to do. I'm going to do some, well, I'm going to do Bob. I'm going to do five. I'm going to do 10. I'm going to do 100. And I'm going to do 201, 2001. How about that? Okay. Then I'm going to hit enter. Instead of doing the semicolon, I'm just going to hit enter and look how my prompt changes. Now your prompt may look different. It just may be a forward slash or something or a, a greater than symbol there or something like that. Mine has the four in there. I do some fancy things on my command line to get, to get that prompt, but you won't get the normal command prompt, right? Um, now I type the do, I'm going to hit enter again. What do I want it to do? Well, I want it to echo and I want it to say number. Now it's going to be weird, right? Cause it's Bob is in that list, right? That's okay. I'm going to hit enter again. Second I hit done and I hit enter, it knows that it's ready to go and it writes it out just like that, right? So anything, we're using these as strings. So Bob is just a string that's in there for number, right? We can use anything, right? So this is how we can do it on the command prompt, right? I don't have to type echo command five times or six times or a hundred times to do whatever I want to do, right? I just have to write it once, the echo command, right? In my for loop and it actually runs it five times, right? Let's see how this looks in a script. So I've already created a script here. Here's my little script. Now this time I'm gonna use name as the variable, right? And I have a list of four names right here in my script. That is my list of names that I'm gonna have. Like I said, that could be anything you want it to be. And then I want it to do echo and I want it to say hello to each person in the list of names that's there and then it's done right this is normally the way that you write it in a script usually with the four on the first line then do and then the echo of what you're going to have it do and you can do multiple things here obviously I can do another echo command if I want I can even do goodbye let's see how this looks like that. And I can, I can list more things as part of what I want it to do if, if that's what I want. Right. And then I can end it by completing done. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this file and close it and let's run this script and see what it looks like. There we go. Notice how it says, hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. It alternates, right? And it uses Jared. Then it uses Mary because I put two commands that I wanted it to run every time it looped. So hello, Jared and goodbye, Jared is the first loop that it went through. Hello and goodbye, Mary is the second loop it went through because there were two instructions, two functions, two formulas, two sets of instructions that it needed to, to process when it went through the loop, right? And then it went through the next one. So hopefully this helps you understand how to create for loops. Now there's more advanced for loops. You can create this list um, in a file. You can do uh, a few other things with arrays and lists and um, you can, you can stack these and embed other type of conditions into the for loop. But uh, that's for a later time. Just understand the, the simple and basic structure of the for loop and you'll do great for this part of your assignment. Thank you.